This video is brought to you by Earmen, makers of portable audio hardware. Click the link in the description box below for more information. It's summertime, finally. And I've been out and about a lot these last few weeks on my bike, walking about the city and with a couple of new pairs of IEMs from Campfire Audio. They both have single drivers. So the, the Honeydew and the Satsuma, which is kind of funky names. But one has a single BA, one has a single dynamic driver. But of course, portable audio isn't just about your headphones because most phones these days, like this Essential phone, does not have a headphone socket. So what do we do? Well, we have to go the way of dongle DAX. And in this video, I want to talk about dongle DAX. So for the past maybe two or three months, I've been having a listen to this thing here. This is called the Helm Bolt. This is a dongle DAC. You can see why it's called a dongle DAC. USB-C here, three and a half mil headphone output here. And this obviously connects to our phone like that. I've also got the THX Onyx, which is a slightly larger dongle DAC. Again, USB-C connector here, three and a half mil output here. And this sells for $200, the Helm sells for $100. And then stepping us up to $300 is the AudioQuest Dragonfly Cobalt. Now this is actually a two-piece unit, but it comes with a dragon tail. But effectively together, it's a dongle DAC, so USB-C here. And again, 3.5 mil output here. Now we don't only you know, use a dongle DAC like the Helm Bolt or the THX Onyx just to enable audio on our smartphone. We do it because these DACs are built with what we might call audiophile sensitivities. They sound way better than any headphone socket on a MacBook or on a PC or on a, a smartphone if it had one and they improve all sources. This is one of the common misconceptions I, I come across all the time is that people ask me, John, do I need a DAC if I'm only listening to Spotify? The answer is absolutely yes. It will make all of your Spotify sound better and your Apple Music and your YouTube and your SoundCloud. But I mainly use Spotify, Cobuzz and Tidal. And for this sort of, I don't want to call it a group test or, I guess it's like a little mini test of three different dongle DACs. In assessing the sound quality of these DACs, I've been listening to music, yeah, from Spotify in lossy format, but Tidal and Kobo's in CD quality. Now I've already made a video about how to connect these dongle DACs, so I don't want to labor the point here, but since I made that video, I did discover in my drawer a little lightning to USB-C adapter. So we need that for the iPhone because the iPhone has a lightning socket and we have USB-C here. Now the thing is, is that this adapter is not official. It's not MFI certified. I think it cost me about eight euros, but just be aware of that. It's not an official adapter. Otherwise we would use the camera connection kit, the official one from Apple, but that only has USB-A on the bottom. And so we would need another USB-A to USB-C adapter. I mean, I think many people, well, many regular viewers know of my view of dongle hell in the iPhone world, which is why I use an Android phone pretty much day to day. So yeah, just be aware of that if you're an iPhone user. One more nerd note actually is that iPhone users don't have to worry about what's called bit perfect playback. So if we play a, a CD quality stream from Tidal, CD quality 44.1 kilohertz is what comes out of the lightning socket. And if we play higher res stuff, it comes out of the lightning socket as that higher res. Now on Android, that is not the case. What comes out of our 
USB-C socket here, like if I attach the THX Onyx. If I play 44.1 kilohertz CD quality music on an Android phone, 48 kilohertz is what comes out of here. Now that's true for local content, for Spotify, for Cobras, but very recently, in the last two weeks, Tidal have started rolling out, an <coughs> which I think does give us bit perfect audio. So when I connect my Dragonfly, for example, to this Android phone, I play CD quality from the phone, this Dragonfly lights up green, whereas previously it was blue. So we're now getting bit perfect from Tidal but not from Cobas, not from Spotify, not from pretty much any other apps, unless you use USB Audio Player Pro, which I'm not really a fan of because it doesn't do offline content. Now, because it's portable gear, some people might be interested in how heavy this is. The Helm Bolt weighs eight grams. The THX Onyx weighs 17 grams. And then the Dragonfly with its dragon tail weighs close to 30 grams. So you might think, well, okay, well, obviously the helm is the best choice if I want to, you know, put this stuff in my pocket, but not necessarily because what I do is I connect this here and then I have to sort of fold this over to put it in my pocket. And I think that on the helm bolt, this connection here where this cable comes in here is a point of weakness. It doesn't feel very robust. It doesn't feel very strong. So in fact, when I connect the Onyx again, this is actually easier to fold into the pocket because it's longer and it tucks away, I guess, more readily inside the pocket like this. So the headphones are connected here, but there doesn't seem to be, not obviously a point of weakness because this is all one piece of rubber here. So I think this is a, a better made unit, but it should be because it costs twice as much. And then similarly, the, the Dragon Tail that's very strong. You can get other USB-A to USB-C adapters for much cheaper than this, for maybe eight euros. But this one is particularly strong. I like this. But here's the thing. If we want to use a Dragonfly with an iPhone and we're using the camera connection kit, I don't know. I think this is probably the, the weakest link in all of the sort of portable audio stuff that we do with an iPhone. This camera connection kit, not very strong. Yes, it folds over, but I don't know. I know people, loads of people that have sort of broken five or six of these from just doing this with a Dragonfly. So yeah, another iPhone sort of thing to consider. Now discerning the audible differences between these three DACs actually was quite the intensive process. So rather than just play stuff and let it happen, which I did do, but I did spend a good few days kind of quick fire A-Bing, which I don't normally do. And for that, I used a playlist that consisted of about seven or eight different songs. And they were Prince's The Ballad of Dorothy Parker from Sign of the Times, Orbital's LC1, which is a, a B-side from the 90s. Also Orbital's The Box. Sigaross's Svengi Engler, is that how you say it? Uh, the Talking Heads is The Big Country from more songs about buildings and food. And R.E.M. and Patti Smith's Ebo The Letter from New Adventures in Hi-Fi. Kind of appropriate, really. So that's just so you know where I'm coming from music-wise. Let's talk about the Helm Bolt first. $99, it's like the ground floor level of, I think, high-end dongle DAX. For me, this sounds a little bit better than my LG V40s and 30s. So if you own one of those, yeah, know that this sounds, it's of the same sort of flavor in that it's not bright, it's a little bit congealed, but I love the top end on this DAC. It's very well judged. I think it's the most ethereal of the three. How's that for a John? Well, it's not even a metaphor, is it? It's a word. I really like how 
this DAC, it doesn't have a lot in the low end compared to the other two, but it just sounds so lovely up top, so delicate. And that makes it a really good match for the Campfire Audio Satsuma, which is the single BA, and it sort of really needs something that's not bright and strident at all, and this is none of those things. Very, very good way to get into portable audio for relatively little money. And that well-judged top end, that ethereal top end, makes this DAC very good for long listening. And I also like that the, this unit, this helm bolt, gives us a good sense of tonal color, music's color, and timbre, and all of those sort of more, I don't know what to say here, shit. I had no idea this area was so loud. Doubling our spend to the THX Onyx. This makes Prince and Orbital sound taller, when I was playing REM's Ebo the Letter, this DAC makes that sound wider, especially the acoustic guitar strums that kind of play out on the periphery of, I think it's the left channel. But perhaps most obvious with this DAC is its more overt separation of instruments. So yeah, it sort of stretches the head stage wider, taller, and puts more space between the players, but it does so very slightly at the expense of the body of those instruments and sounds and vocals. So this is a, just a smidge thinner, and I'm talking like minor details here. It's a, it's a smidge thinner than the Helm Bolt and by association, the LG V40 and V30. And that, that sort of lack of body really presents on the kick drum that introduces us to Orbital's LC1. Now you could describe that kick drum as being tighter through this one, or you could describe it as being leaner. Again, that comes down to interpretation. But I think the number one word that describes the sound of the THX Onyx is clean. Yeah, clean, like you're looking through a, a cleaner window on the music. So if that's your thing, then you, you know, you're really gonna love this. The Dragonfly Cobalt, 300 bucks. It's quite the step up from the Onyx in price, but not so much in sound quality. It's not quite as, as clean or as lean as the Onyx, and it does make vocals pop a lot more. So Prince's vocal pops forward a lot more, Michael Stipe's pops forward a lot more, and I like that, and I think the, the top end on this is a little bit keener. I mean, everything just sort of bursts out more with stronger dynamics than the THX, and that's top to bottom. So if you're a little bit averse to an overly insistent top end, you might not want to go for the Cobalt. And I would have never have said this a couple of years ago, or was it two years ago when we did the first video about this? But next to these other units that have since been released, this, yeah, this one's a little bit ebullient up top. Um, I don't mind it too much with some material, but I guess it, it does get a little bit tiring after a while. One thing I did notice from, from using the Cobalt with my essential phone and Tidal playing CD quality streams and Cobas playing CD quality streams was on Ebo the Letter, the REM Paddy Smith track, the Cobalt was the best of the three in exposing Mike Mills' bass line. I spent about an hour going through all of these DACs just listening to that bass line in that track. And on LC1, the orbital track, there's a tape hiss at the start because it was recorded probably on not amazing studio gear back in the early 90s. And this was really the only DAC that really pulled that out. See what I mean by the top end here being a little bit you know, more lively? But definitely, definitely, I think this DAC standout quality compared to the other three is Dynamics. This is the punchiest, most exciting sounding DAC. I mean, I liken this to the uh, NAD amplifier that I spoke about in my entry level hi-fi system video. It's, you know, it's really strong and punchy and I, I really like that, but again, I would never have described that in hearing this in isolation. And if you want even more punch and even more excitement, then I would cut over to the Dragonfly Red. But that's with the Campfire headphones. I would say this one and the Onyx are a much better match for the Honeydew, which is the single dynamic driver Campfire headphone, which isn't as resolving up top as the Satsuma. So this gives it a sort of kick in the pants in that respect, which, you know, it creates a, a, a balanced sound. And I think that's what many of us are after, really, is, is balancing our DAC and amplification 
with the sound of our headphones or our earphones. What I found really interesting about this little investigation in sort of trying to work out the differences in sound quality between these three dongle DACs was how hard I had to work just to tease apart the smallest differences, which makes the Helm Bolt at 99 bucks such a bargain because I think, I mean, if you want sort of best, most, most dynamic, most exciting sound, Cobalt, if you want the sort of the cleanest sound where neutrality is communicated as a feeling, because we can't know about whether it's neutral or not, because we weren't there and all those other reasons which I've been through before and bored you to death with, I'm not gonna do it again here. But neutrality is a feeling, the THX. But yeah, the biggest bargain here is by far the Helm Bolt. So, yeah, there isn't a huge difference, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. Not as much as I would have expected, actually. But what I do like is these improve the sound quality of everything that I throw at them. So I don't have to worry about, you know, is my Spotify going to sound great from these DACs? Yes, it will. Same with Cobas and Tidal. You know my thoughts on high-res audio now, so I don't listen to high-res audio really all that much. And out in the street, out and about around Berlin, Forget it. it. It's like going, as my friend Michael Lavonia said, it's like going to a Michelin starred restaurant and then focusing on the cutlery. Madness. Especially with all, I mean, you can hear the noise that's going on around me right now. There's construction over there. We've had to kind of pause several times for trucks. I think CD quality is absolutely definitely enough when you're out and about in the street listening to music. And even then, you know, making the case for it against. 320 kilobit Spotify is pretty tough. But what makes a bigger difference is these three DACs. These three dongle DACs make a bigger difference to our listening experience than stepping up from 320 kilobits per second Spotify to CD quality on Tidal and Cobras. So now I'm back at home, and one thing I really like about dongle DACs is how easily they can go from being used outside the house to inside the house because it's very easy to disconnect it from your phone and then connect it to a Raspberry Pi or a MacBook or a PC laptop and use that DAC, use that dongle DAC as part of a loudspeaker hi-fi system. However, only the THX and the AudioQuest need apply here because the Helm Bolt has auto impedance sensing. So it automatically detects the impedance of what it's connected to. And I think if the connected device is less than 150 ohms, it drops down to one volt. And I have noticed that it drops down to one volt when I connect it to quite a few different integrated amplifiers actually. So it just becomes too quiet. Unless you've got a lot of gain on your amp, then you'll be fine. Or if you don't want too much gain from your DAC, it's a great choice. But I think for most people in most situations, the Helm Bolt will be too quiet as a DAC in a hi-fi loudspeaker system. Now, just as I only use IEMs outside of the house, I very rarely use over-ear headphones when I'm out and about, unless it's really cold. When I'm back at home, I never use IEMs at all. I always use over-ear headphones. Now, these are the Sennheiser Drop 6XX. I believe they're like a Sennheiser 650. 300 ohm headphone. So they're quite the challenge for our dongle DACs. With each of them, I didn't get a lot of headroom on this. I had to push volume pretty much close to maximum inside the Tidal and Cobos apps to get a decent listening level with these. But yeah, it's still, sounds pretty damn fantastic. And what's really interesting is that you put these with a dongle DAC, any of the three that I've got, and it sounds way, way, way better than the entry-level loudspeaker systems that I've been talking about in recent weeks. In fact, for 200 bucks, these are possibly the biggest bargain at the entry level for open back headphones. These sound so good, and with a dongle DAC, just so nice. The Audacy Sign, uh, an 18 ohm headphone, a little bit easier to drive. 
I get more headroom from these with the dongle DAX, just a little bit more. I run the DAX at about 85, 80% with these. These are closed back headphones. I could wear these outside the house if I wanted to. For me, these prove to be the best match with the Helm Bolt. It's very sort of filigreed and delicate top end, really plays well to the planar magnetic driver in here. We don't get a lot of bass, but these planars are pretty good in that respect. With the THX and the AudioQuest, these can get a little bit strident at times. But again, I'm, I'm just being such a nitpicker with that because what I like about the THX with the Sennheiser is that it really sort of opens up the top end and that sort of cleaner vibe really plays a nice counterpoint to this headphone, which is already very slightly warm. The AudioQuest Cobalt gives us a little bit more tonal color when listening to something like The Box by Orbital. But I think the Onyx is more conducive to longer listening sessions with these. And then we have Meze's 99 Classics, which are a very, very, very easy to drive headphone. No problem with headroom with any of these. In fact, if, if anything, I had to pull the volume way down to like well below the bottom 30%. Now I think the THX with these is a little bit too strident with electronic music and the Helm Bolt is by far the best fit for a more balanced, more natural, more organic, more easeful sound from this particular headphone. So where does that leave us? Well, if you want the best value dongle DAC, then it's definitely the Helm Bolt. Especially if you're only listening to headphones and especially if your headphones are already a little bit bright and couldn't really go any further without you maybe wincing a little bit. If you double your spend to 200 bucks, we get the THX Onyx, which gives us a much bigger sound, but also, a sound which I think is, well, gives us more of a, a cleaner and slightly leaner overall Gestalt. And then stepping up to the Dragonfly Cobalt at 300 US dollars or euros, that gives us more excitement. It puts more kind of pep in our stride when we're listening. It's just, yeah, more dynamically exciting. And again, if you want even more of that, go to the Dragonfly Red. And we also go to Dragonflies if we want USB-A compatibility. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below. If you like my attitude towards high-end audio in that it encompasses DACs that take me outside of the house, then bring me home again, then take me outside of the house again, I'm so happy we got to film a video outside of the house once more. So if you dig all of that, please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. I get a number of messages and emails from readers asking where I get my glasses from. If you want to know that, the answer lies in the description box below.